What's up guys, Larry Chan here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. We are focusing on autos and today we got a really, really awesome auto. We got my buddy, Chris Forsberg here. What's up dog? How are you guys? So a lot of you guys probably don't know, Chris is probably my oldest or second oldest long client mm -hmm. ever yeah i think uh, so so the crazy thing is formula drift you're driving i think your brother-in-law was taking pictures he was you, right? back in 07 yeah. yeah yeah so your brother-in-law was taking pictures i was hanging around like oh hey maybe i can take pictures for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh yeah my bro-in-law he was like into it he like bought a camera like fully invested in it. like he was traveling to all the events but it just you know he's, he's got another job and it was tough for him so yeah, Larry's like, I could take photos for you too. And Mike's like, yeah, like get Larry to do it. So, I mean, maybe not that much of a push off, but um, you know, it was, uh, it was cool and awesome that he helped me out in those times, 2007, that long ago. But yeah, and then like, so Larry fired it up for us and started taking over, getting all the photos and everything at all the rounds. And we've been going ever since, so. Well, I definitely appreciate being able to document your career and being <laughs> being there you know for all of those moments your championships all your wins that's like what we're just talking about yeah. it's like how do you have time to like watch all these videos we're like well, we're actually like we're we're making those videos we're making those moments and so like yeah chris to go is back, in the car guys yeah all right? <laughs> he can't be watching the videos it's tough to do both <laughs> he's in the car <laughs> Yeah, I know. We're like, we're having a laugh about like, oh, did you see this episode? We're like, oh, I missed it. Oh, did you see this episode? Oh, I missed it. And like, it's, it's each other talking about each other's videos. So you kind of feel bad for him. I'm like, sorry, Larry, I didn't see that last autofocus. And I'm like, did you see my video? He's like, no, I didn't see yours. We're like, yeah, because we're out there making them. So it's, uh, it's part of the fun. He it's was the... actually in the car doing the donuts, doing the burnouts. <laughs> but uh, we're actually at your new garage, the blackout yeah. garage. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll touch on that in a later video when we talk about Mr. Toad's Wild Ride or your Twin Turbo Z. A couple of them. Today, we're gonna talk about your old school Z. It's a 280Z and you actually built this for SEMA. I did, yeah. Well, I first got this car back in 2014, actually. I, I had a motorcycle. I rode it across the country with a bunch of our bros, Vaughn and a bunch of other guys were, were in that group. And so I got back, I was like, I need to get rid of this motorcycle. I'm like, you know, just gonna mess myself up. So. Uh, this thing popped up out of nowhere. It was fully stripped out, uh, no interior, no nothing. The body had like some dents and scratches on it and it had an RB in it already. And it was 4,000 bucks. It was just a total steal. So I sold my motorcycle, bought this car and just slowly started building it up because I always wanted to have like, you know, the bookend um, Z chassis. So the, the first generation Z and then obviously the, the current generation Z. And you know, to have a street car, having a classic makes sense because you can do a lot more to the chassis, to the engine, the suspension without having to fall under all of the carb rules. And so it made sense and it just slowly evolved over the years. And coming into 2016, I wanted to really do a revamp on it. And uh, AEM hit me up saying that they would allow me a booth space if I built a car out um, you know, that could be of that caliber. And so I just went full in 110% and we actually took this car all the way to the show got Super Street's best in show and the PlayStation best import. So super stoked. So when I actually saw that you got this car, I was so excited. I'm a big old school Z guy. Yeah, As everyone knows, one, right? And, yes, and everyone loves to make fun of me for bringing it up all the time because I'm so <laughs> proud of it. Uh, right now it's under the knife again at Z Car Garage getting new brakes and a new cooling system. But uh, I was so excited. I wanted to actually document it kind of from the beginning. So I actually had a chance to uh, get some shots of it, like during assembly, I think, mm -hmm. when you were kind of doing the plumbing, when yep. you're doing the wiring, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, that was super cool to see. This seems to me like, like a lifer car for you, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a car that I don't really have any intentions on getting rid of. We went through and did a bunch of cool episodes. Um, we did a thing called Drift Car Dynamics, where we even had Jason from Engineering Explained uh, come on to the show and help explain, uh, you know, like do the, the dumb down drawings of how to set camber, how to set toe while we're physically doing it with the car and he's doing it with the whiteboard. And we did just a bunch of cool different projects with the car. Clarion, we, uh, we did like a Dream Like a Champion video with it. And we did some stuff with Hoonigan with it back in the day, some burnout stuff. And yeah, it's just always been a killer car that I just, you know, built as a, like you said, like a forever car, so. Let's check out the engine bay. Yeah, that's where we spent most of the time because 
you know, as you know, we like to build cool race cars. And so we wanted to kind of take that same look and feel into the engine bay of the street car. And this thing is, like I said, a full uh, RB25 swapped setup. What we did in the engine bay was very similar to what we do on the race cars. Tubular top mount manifold. We have um, full custom intake and exhaust, uh, custom plenum creations, carbon billet intake manifold, Detroit's injectors, Mishimoto cooling system. I went through and did all the, you know, crimped braided lines, like all the race crimp turned down, like looking really, really slick. I mean, cause you are actually, you were telling me this stuff is your favorite. Oh yeah. Yeah. This, yeah like like yeah. just the final touches, mm -hmm. the last 10% really to kind of get it running yeah. and on the road yeah, is your it's, favorite. It's like one thing to pick up a couple manifolds and bolt it in. Then you just like start running wires and running hoses wherever you have to, but like to, to take the time and, you know, make all the lines the way you want them to be and like get them all tied in together, nice and parallel. Um, you know, even like with the radium surge tank, you know, these guys turn down and out and hook up to the factory suspension. Uh, there's a few things I want to update on it. We actually just got some new radium bits uh, for a new overflow tank and a new catch can. So I'm going to um, remove these because we custom made these over at Rad Industries. I'm going to get like the full radium package. So it'll be the surge tank, catch can, and then the coolant tank and have it all nice black billet matching. And it's, uh, yeah, like you said, it's that last like 10% where I really like to spend the effort, you know, like running the lines all nice and clean. Oh, that's so clean. You know, I'm just like trying to make it all like look nice and sweet and match. And this was built almost four years ago now. So it's like, it's funny. I look at things I'm like, really want to change that. Really want to change that. Cause you know, every year goes by, you learn more and more stuff and uh, you want to like always update the car, but this thing runs and drives great. So like, I don't really need <laughs> to tear into it anymore. Yeah. This is so nice. And the thing is uh, it, it's, it's rare to see, I guess this level of build, but now I guess the Z's have gone up in price so much. Yeah. I literally, for whatever reason, I was looking on Craigslist yesterday at <laughs> Z's and they're like $30,000 and up. Wait, they are? Yeah, for really clean ones. All right, maybe we will put a price tag on this yeah. thing. <laughs> <No>. $1 <million>. <laughs> oh, But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they're obviously going up. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to get the thing. I knew it was a screaming deal and Porsches at the time were like, taken off and I was like, you know, the Japanese classics are going to be the next ones that go up because uh, the Porsches were like the, you know, the 60s and early 70s and these are like the, you know, 70s into the 80s. And so I knew that these were going to start gaining value. And so I wanted to get one before it got unobtainable for me and kind of build it to what it is now. Awesome. Well, so you got the T3 components here. Yeah, T3 that's what suspension. we did with um, the drift car dynamics. We did a full T3 uh, suspension package, front and rear. Everything's adjustable. Camber plates, lower control arms, tension rods. They have all the billet components to put on the Willwood brake system. So it's got upgraded brakes uh, front and back. So we did like all new masters, all new calipers. And so, yeah, we got Willwood four piston fronts and four piston rears. And uh, like I was saying, you got like the two piece billet uh, with slotted rotors, just a bunch of nice stuff. And on the uh, wheel tire package, I did SSR MS1s. So it's like a modern, but classic, you know, meshy look and just did them all black. Flat black uh, centers with gloss black barrels. And of course the Surf 4Gs on the uh, tires. We did 225 fronts and 255 rears. So the whole thing is full staggered. 16 by nine front, 17 by 10 rear, 225, 16 front, 255, 17 rear. So it's just like the full stagger package. I think it really kind of like fills the wheel wells out and looks really good. So like I said, not just a show car, not just a, a kit and a paint job. This thing is full race car top to bottom. So did it actually come with the Genos? No, this was, uh, it was a, a flat nose uh, when I got it. And when we worked with Carbon Signal, this was the first uh, Moonbeam kit that they made. They had the, uh, the Geno style and the, the regular flat nose style. And I actually wanted to do this because it wasn't as common. Uh, still isn't that common, but you have uh, a few more guys kind of doing it now. But this one, when it came out at SEMA, it just like, it stood out completely uh, from all the other Zs because most people are used to this front end stopping right here. But with it all coming out and being more aerodynamic and just like, you know, the bigger lip spoilers, it just really stretched that front end out. And I think it looks really, really slick. So, and the other cool thing, we got to convert it to the 240Z front end, um, you know, get the blinkers back tied into the bumper instead of hovering in the grill like the 280 does. It's really, really cool. Some people get confused because they'll, they'll see you driving up, they're like, oh, it's a 240Z, right? I'm like, well, it's sort of a 280, but yeah, you know, it's like so. A little confusing, but um, I, I like this front end the best. No, I really like it. The only thing that gives away is the taillights, pretty much. Yeah, from the yeah. Outside. Of course, it's still yeah. Of course, it's still the 280Z taillights. I didn't go through that much effort. I don't think it's that uh, ridiculous to have the uh, the different 
set up on there. You know, like I would have had like cut into the factory sheet metal to do the different taillight with the uh, reverse light mounted in here. I think it looks great, it looks fine. We, we added a little diffuser to it too, so it uh, really ties the whole back end together because it did have the um, rear bumper delete on it. And I think it was just a little too smooth back here for how angular and aggressive the rest of the car was. So Skillard has this um, like a water jet cutout um, diffuser, it bolts on. We just had to like make a couple extensions uh, to get it all mounted up. But yeah, I think it really just ties the whole back end together. I love your license plate so much. Too. Yeah. It's perfect yeah, in California, leader, you man. can get those uh, throwback license plates. Classic plates, I know, and it's black with a gold, it's like it just ties the whole thing together. And then, um, yeah, the, uh, well, the other thing, going into the interior, we did, um, hang on, you got that side locked. Safety first, Larry. <laughs> Let me move these gloves. Oh, the but, interior uh, is, is uh, really where you put a lot of your personal touches. I yeah, absolutely so, love it. Yeah, we uh, you know, added the handbrake, of course. It works, it's great. Um, and then the full dash was redone with uh, Alcantara, um, speed hut, carbon ringed uh, gauges. I did all the fonts and needles and, and the graphs the same as the factory Datsun. So you got the dashes on the two main gauges, and then we did the bar style on the uh, smaller indicator ones, the temperatures and the pressures. So just like the factory Z1. And we did the, uh, you know, sunk a, a full navigation unit down here, carbon fiber console, um, you know, Alcantara on the console as well, and Recaro seats, of course. And yeah, just tie the whole thing together so that it has, um, once again, like, not just like a, a race car type feel with you know the wheel and the handbrake, but also just super super slick. So and everything still works, like the dome light even. Still right, works. I know stupid <laughs> stuff like that like really gets me going. So. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> Those are the things that you always forget about. Yeah, and it's cool that you retained like the stock steering uh, mm -hmm. column, but you update it with the steering wheel and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. We actually did a. Uh, I had the power column in here for a minute, but it drove. It drove really well on the street, but when I tried to drift it, it was awful because it gave like a really weird feedback in the front end. And it wouldn't, f um, you know, feedback and self steer. So I actually removed and put a manual rack back into it. So, but it was really nice when I was driving it around. It had a little dial right here, so I could adjust the actual uh, tension on it. So all the way down is basically like manual rack, and then all the way up is like you can like one finger parallel park it. So that part was cool, but it made it a little tougher at the track. So I just went back to manual. So what's the transmission in this car? RB25, yeah. So it's a full RB25 transmission, five speed. Um, feels good, super strong. The, uh, the rear end is a R200 S14, or I'm sorry, so it's a S13 front carrier with a S14 uh, billet gold rear cover. So it's, the, it's like the fixed two bolt front end from a 13 carrier, no bushings, and then the rear is the fixed two bolt um, backing plate from the S14. And then all that ties in with the Techno Toy Tuning uh, rear end kit. So same thing, adjustable rear control arms, adjustable camber. The hubs are 240SX hubs with drive shaft shop axles and drive shaft. Spindles are from Techno Toy Tuning as well. They make a whole plate system that just replaces everything. So is this a uh, running standalone ECU or? Uh, yeah, this is actually on a Power FC. So we have the Apex Power FC. It's just clean and simple. Um, it didn't need like a full, full standalone plugs into the factory harness. You get full control of the engine and the, uh, the computer to tune it for whatever boost. It's got, you know, the Apex boost controller in it as well. And we, yeah, we've had no problems with it. I've been running Power FCs in a couple of my cars since like 2006. And so on like a car like this, it's great. Super plug and play. There have been a couple other companies that came out with similar systems uh, over the years. Apex was one of the first to do it. And so I just had like good faith with uh, those components in my 240SX and this Z and um, my early uh, SR powered Z had a, a power of C in it too. So, um, and all of those always ran great. Never had any issues with them, so. Did you have a chance to dyno this? Yeah, it's, um, we went for like torque and drivability. It's like 360 uh, wheel horsepower. We could push it over 400 if we wanted to, but you know, I'm not trying to blow it up. It's pretty freaking fast already with that amount of power and this light of a chassis, so. I didn't want to, you know, try and scream like 450 out of it and pop a head gasket just to have it, you know, spin the tire a little bit quicker. It's it's plenty to get it going. Yeah, it's already pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, 245s on a car that weighs I don't even know how much, probably 2,300 pounds. Yeah. Um, with that much power. It's, yeah. Uh, 
No, it's pretty it, crazy. It scoots, yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah. I still got the 45s on the back. I got uh, a pair of 255s of the, the Surf 4Gs that we're gonna um, swap onto it. Cause I was running these, the SU1s for a little bit, uh, which, you know, feel really nice, but I wanted to get like the smoother, meatier sidewall, the, the better tread pattern. So I've got the fronts on there. I still gotta swap the rears on. And um, that it's not really gonna wanna step out at all with those tires on it. It's almost the size that we run on a pro car, 275s. So it's uh yeah it'll be it'll be pretty good but like you know i drive the thing on the street more so than taking it out to drift events so i want it to have like good feel good grip um you know good handling well can we hear it yeah absolutely warm it up a little bit cool thing the nice little touch um, when I first started working with OCD works he's the guy that builds all my race car engines the VR 38s um, the first thing that we did with him was actually back for the SEMA show 2016 he did the uh, Whistly Boy C51R mod on this thing which makes it sound so cool when you're driving down the street and he made a custom billet uh, valve cover for me with the coil pack cover he's got his name in there OCD works and all that and then on the front end, he changed the font, or used the font, I should say, from the RB25, and he changed it to CF64. So see that little touch on there? Oh my God. That is so cool. Right? See, these are the little things that I don't really notice. Yeah. I mean, overall, there's so many cool details on this car yeah. that I see. You know all the little personal touches that you put on it, and that's kind of the thing. And you made it your own, really. This is not a 280z no. anymore it's no. basically not gold really leader. at all it's gold leader this is gold leader no this this thing is a riot so i i love driving it it's super fun to drive and um yeah just like like we said a lot of those little touches of things that you do to it that you don't really um uh notice or like you know the common person wouldn't notice when they're just looking at the car so like when we're building these race cars it's um you know, there's so many hours that go into the underside of the car that no one will ever see. And that's what keeps the cars on track. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us this. No problem. This thing is awesome. <laughs> uh, maybe, can you do a little pull out on the street yeah, for us? Yeah, yeah. let's go for a little ride. Let's do it. You've never even been in this thing, have no. you? No, never been in this thing. Been around it for many years, never been in it. That's really funny. Oh, you actually have seat belts? Uh, yeah, it's, it takes, you gotta like, you know, it's, it's, luxury it's a classic, is this? you gotta slowly pull it out. This is luxurious. It yeah. Mine actually came with like airplane style buckles. Did it? Um, I, I don't think it even really came with like this kind of seat belt. That e-brake is so cool. Oh yeah, this, this truck's gonna kinda mess me up here, but. RB sound is so defined. The RB is my favorite sounding engine of all time. It is, it's just so clean and smooth. And I think it sounds better than a 2J any day. It's, um, you really can't compare it. It's just different. It's like old school Japanese. Yeah. It's like the whole- There's not too many people that modify these. Can you feel that clunk? That's the, you got Tomei full two-way clutch type dip in it. Oh. Byproduct, you know, it doesn't make the car any faster. Oh, of course. But guess what? It makes us so much happier to hear these kind of sounds. Yeah. 
the claw valve, the, the turbo sound, the exhaust note. This is such a crisp inline six exhaust note. It's I know, so it's, it's got just one resonator right in the tip, um, just to take that little bit of rasp out so it stays ultra smooth. And um, yeah, absolutely love the sound of it. So it's, um, like I said, one of my favorite sounding cars like of all time. That's how nice it is down here. That's man. why you moved out here, right? That's it. We're less than three minutes from Newport Beach. It's it's so crazy to me how much air. This is gonna sound really dumb, but <laughs> everyone and everyone's gonna call me out on it. But it's crazy how much air is is escaping from this. Like it's so loud. Oh yeah. It's like just dumping a massive amount of air. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. We're always joking about like with turbos. It's like you just get in the throttle, just like. <gasps> <laughs> trying to get as much in as possible. But yeah, and here we are, man. PCH, the California classic. Oh, that sound is crazy. Yeah, it's super smooth. Like I said, just absolutely love the way this thing sounds. Um, being able to just like hop in and listen to one of my favorite engines of all time is it's, it's so freaking cool. Like we'll uh, we'll get around the corner here and get the best part about it with the wastegate. You know, it's not a, it's not a straight six unless it's got an open gate on it, right? Wow. I mean, you must get some crazy looks in this thing. I cannot even tell you how many like freaking high fives, thumbs ups, and whatever we get when every time this car goes out. People, actually remember, people just get stoked. I actually remember you mentioned this to me a couple years ago. You, anytime you post anything about this, people go crazy. People go wild. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's violent. Yeah, it's good. Like I said, it's like, it's just enough to like make some noise and, and feel good without really getting yourself into trouble. Like, I don't need another 100 horsepower in this car. For what? I'm just gonna... Well, I I mean, I feel like it's just awesome. You can floor it long, for longer. Yeah. And and you can enjoy the noise for longer. And then, man, when it hits that rev limiter, it's violent yeah. too. Bow, bow, bow. The thing goes... Always gotta top it out. Clear it out, make sure she's happy. So you guys, You gotta stretch these things out a little bit. But yeah, I was saying like, anytime you post your race car stuff, people are like, yeah, we're used to that. Yeah, it's, when you it's post ex this, it's expected. Yeah, is what we like to say. We're like, yeah. everyone just like, oh, that's of course, they, that's, that's how they started car. following you. Yeah. But then once they see this kind of stuff, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, this is what he's into. Yeah, like uh, when we, and like with between this and my, my RX-7, the RX-7, every time I post a photo of that, it just goes nuts. And uh, same with this car. It's the race car that's like, okay, cool. Like he's at FD again, okay, cool. Like, and we're like, you know how much effort it takes to get that car to turn three laps? <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole, yeah. uh, I, I heard uh, uh, at one point it was like, I don't know, people were saying how much it costs per lap. Of course, it's different for every team. Some teams it costs $500 per lap. Some teams it's probably two thousand dollars per lap. Yeah. You know, when you, when you break down, like we get at best case scenario, you get thirty laps in an FD weekend. That's running full practice and going like all the way to the top. You're getting like thirty, maybe forty laps. And yeah, you factor in about how much it costs uh, to be there that weekend. Yeah, it can be over a thousand dollars a lap. It's yeah. Insane. Yeah. Insane. That's why we build these cars. And we don't turn them up too much. We keep the wick down so that they last longer. And we don't need a full pit crew to chase us around. Oh my god, I'm so sorry I got rid of mine. Oh, oh you, you do? You had a 240Z? Oh, you oh. raced it? I had it with 110. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. That's what you were talking that's what we're talking about. We we're just talking about that. Yeah. That is not my mom or grandma. <laughs> hey mom! Yeah. Hey, bye, bye, see you later! Um, every time, every time this car comes out, either 
at a minimal high five, thumbs ups, but like if you get caught up in a light with someone, everyone has a Z story. Like I had a Z or like my, my dad had a Z. The first car I learned how to drive was a Z. Like it's yeah. insane like the memories this car will pull out of people. And that like makes me so happy. You, you know? know, the crazy thing to me is um, I almost feel like the Z is more an American car <laughs> than a Japanese yeah, car. totally. You know, there's more Zs sold anywhere else. I mean, I don't even know if this is true or not. I'm guessing it's true. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go with this is yeah. a hard fact. Yeah, yeah, this is a hard fact. More <laughs> Zs have sold in the US versus anywhere else. I already, I'm pretty sure yeah. that's, the, that's the case, you know? And, and part of it is that, um, if I remember correctly, in, with the original story of the 240Z, it was actually shaped to be a little bigger so it could fit tall guys like you. Hey man, we've got you plenty know? of room in yeah. here. <laughs> so, there you well, go. Yeah, no, it's it's a cool car and like it definitely came right during like the gas crisis uh, and it just went nuts because people couldn't afford the big crazy V8s and they wanted to have a fun little sports car and like the Z dropped in the early 70s and it was just like, that's the car I want. That's like the little fun sports car I want to drive. I just could not imagine 1970 or even in 1969 yeah. getting into a brand new 240Z right. and <laughs> just cruising this this street. This exact street. This exact street would be insane. Yeah. That would be so cool. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's rad. These things have like such a history and, and I, I love to hear stories literally every time I take it out. So it's awesome. It gets you in a good mood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're in a good mood right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for showing us this. Um, this thing is crazy. No, that that two-way is insane. Oh yeah, it's the real deal. Yeah. Don't get tired of that. Oh my <laughs> nope. God. Nope. It's just it's such so a good, good sound. So good. But yeah, like, I keep wanting to like, oh, I'm gonna like pull the motor out, rebuild it, and like turn it up to like 75, and you know maybe get like another like 200 horsepower. But I'm like, for what? For what? It's fine. Leave it alone. I mess with all my cars. <laughs> this yeah. one's yeah, running so and doing just fine. Yeah. Leave it alone. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, Anytime. Yeah, we're gonna go back to the garage. We'll okay. feature a couple of other cars and we'll see you next video. That's a wrap. Yeah.